Good afternoon, everybody. This is uh, Jeremy Medeiros and JP Ruja coming to you from Nonsuch Isle in Bermuda on a beautiful, uh, very warm and humid um, Saturday afternoon. Um, I have to think here, June the 4th, 2022. And we really are into the final phase, uh, phase the final stage of the cacao breeding season for this year. Um, about half of the chicks have now fledged out to sea. Um, the other half are in various degrees of getting ready to fledge. Uh, some of them are exercising already, which uh, when they come out at night from their nest burrows, and they spend a couple hours exercising and strengthening their flight muscles and just walking around and exploring the nesting colony. And this is all a very important part of the imprinting um, sort of process for the birds. This is how they find their way back here. Because um, once they fledge out to sea, there's no parental supervision. They do it totally on their own and they just rely on instinct and their innate flying and hunting abilities uh, to learn where the food is, how to catch it, how to avoid predators, how to use the, the winds and such to, to travel these enormous distances that they do. And it's all on their own. There's no, no parental supervision whatsoever. Um, but this imprinting, they do wandering around for anywhere from three to seven nights. Uh, the average is about five nights. Um, wandering around the colony and just really establishing where they are on the planet um, that's very important because after three to five years when they mature and they return quite often they'll come in and land within meters of their original um, nest site where they fledged from all those years before so it's a it's a highly accurate way of um, them returning finding their way back uh, to where they originated from and uh, so, you know, it's, it's interesting to see them at this point. Um, uh, the Cahal Cam 1 chick left quite a while ago now, about a week and a half ago. And Totoro has started uh, exercising from Cahal Cam 2. Um, last night was the second night that he'd been out. But it's not going very far. It's only coming just barely out of the nest entrance and not going more than a couple of feet away. And, you know, there's little traces of down and such from from him that is wearing off. Um, you can see right here, there's down. And uh, in fact, last night we saw several of the chicks from this colony, uh, including from the 830 nest, the 820 nest, and from one of the nests on the east side of the colony, all around exercising and exploring and such. And so it's just a very important part of their developmental process. So I'm gonna go and take a look at Totoro, take him out and give him possibly his last um, weight check, growth check. Oh, there he is. Okay, and here we go. Yeah, and he's really, gosh, what a difference from the last check, which was uh, not that long ago. It was only about a week and a half or so. Um, he was still almost completely downy then, and you can see his lost the down from more than half of his body now, his down free on his face, his wings, his tail, his shoulder, and almost completely from his rump. He's just got a few tufts left here. Yeah, see, and he's his not really that keen on bite me. And, and he's starting to lose down from his uh, breast feathers as well. You can see that pure white underside that he has. Um, yeah, so it's looking really good. Still feels at a good weight, has been fed incredibly well by the parents. In fact, both parents, I think just two or three nights ago, both parents had um, visited him on the same night. And it was a bit of a family reunion in the nest with the male bird, the female bird, and uh, the chick all, all in there together. And so he, he got a double feed. So right now, it's just very curious. It's a... Very interesting little bird. I mean, looking at the bill, it's hard to tell. But this bird, you know, it's hard to tell if it's a male or a female. I don't know. I will measure the bill just to see if I can get a better idea. So what I'm going to do is uh, give it its possibly its last um, growth check. Um, it's already been banded, been fitted with an identification band. It'll carry for the rest of its life. It's also been fitted with a GLS or global 
locational system um, tag or geolocator as it's called sometimes um, which is designed to take daily position fixes uh, for up to nearly three years is up to for about 32 months and then it'll go into standby mode archive the data and then you know it'll just stay on until the bird returns and then hopefully we can you know recapture it and take it off yeah this this bird still still has to lose a lot of weight because it's been fed so much it's still at a very good weight usually they slim down and fledge somewhere between about 250 and 280 grams i've known them to fledge as heavy as just over 300 like 304 grams 310 grams but never more than that because they're just too heavy and this bird is still let's see 346 so 326 grams so still a very good weight despite the amount of exercising it's been doing so let's see 326 I, I must say that both Kahal Cam 1 and Kahal Cam 2 the chicks this year were among the healthiest and best fed best cared for out of all of the Kahal Cam chicks that we've we've ever done in the last 10 years or so um, the parents were both in you know of both chicks were in top form and they really did an, an unusually large amount of feeding visits now yeah it's it's still got a little bit to go it's 249 now normally they'll fly out to sea once their wing cord exceeds about 265 so it's 249 so i would say at a minimum this chick probably has about three more nights of exercise and it might be as as much as five more nights it depends if it has another feeding visit by either of the adults um, that'll delay it because it, it's got all this you know extra weight it's got to digest the food and then lose the weight again and it's great because it helps it to develop it'll be in better condition uh, you know when it does fledge out to sea so 249 and that's very typical they usually start to come out and exercise once they get more than about 245 so that ties in perfectly um, okay so we know its plumage is already the parts of its body that are down free are the face wings tail shoulder uh, not so much the rump but the chest as well so and i will just quickly check its legs just turn it over and it has been fitted with identification band and this bird's um, individual a unique um, number identification number is e 0843 so so it's already been banded e e0843 and that's on the left leg so we know it's a known age bird now on the other leg the right leg is this small little gls tag and this is it right here and we could actually see it clearly on the legs of the bird as it walked around and uh, another chick that was walking around too that's also tagged and the nice thing i was i was very pleased to see that the um, tags were in no way hindering the birds as they walked around the colony because the the tags will automatically rotate to the top and they're made of a like a super slippery soft um, but very durable plastic that also is uv resistant so it won't get brittle with age and you can see it's it's quite loose on the leg moves up and down rotates around and that's so that it doesn't constrict or chafe the leg at all because the bird after all will be carrying this uh this tag for the next three to five years until it returns so we had to make sure and we've actually tested these on adults for up to two years and there was no there was there was just no sign of any effect on the legs whatsoever no chafing no constriction no no discoloration or nothing so the birds just seem to wear it like we wear a wrist watch and, and such you hardly notice it's there after a while so yeah everything looks really good you see the birds really chilled out <laughs> you know they um this one's so used to being handled you know it's been checked out like this every week for the long three plus three month plus um uh, you know period of development so and it's turned into a it's just a very you know nice little uh, fledgling bird so 
So yeah, my, my guesstimate would be about three to four more nights and then this bird will be ready to fledge out the sea. And then we won't probably see it again until about 2025 to 2027. So uh, that's when hopefully we can detach the uh, tags and download all of the data which has been archived um, on the tag. Okay, so last but not least, I'm just going to wrap it up a bit because they don't really like this part at all. And this will be a last chance for me right before fledging to check its bill length, which I really don't like. But it's, it's one of the ways, the easiest way to actually sex the bird. Okay, I know, I know. Yeah, I think this is a female, you know. And just looking at the shape of the bill, the bill is not very thick from top to bottom. It's quite long. And this sort of bears that out. It's like 27.3 millimeters. So if it was a male, it would probably be in excess of about 29 millimeters. So 27.3. Okay. Okay. So, okay, so I think we've done all that we need to do with Totoro now. Um, of course, its name is from a Japanese an anime um, character, and it was named by uh, Sophie Ruja, um, JP's daughter and junior explorer. And um, the other Kahao Cam 1 chick was Atlas, and that was named by my own daughter, Elizabeth. So yeah, everything looks good. Totoro looks in beautiful shape. You can see the tube nose where the nostrils are fused together almost into like a jet intake like structure on top of the bill and that's uh, basically there are glands in there that help it to uh, drink salt water directly and uh, filter out the fresh water from the salt and also improve the sense of smell and they have an incredibly acute sense of smell um, that's how they find food in the ocean they can actually find where plankton and fish and, sh and squid and stuff like that um, are in the top layers of the ocean. They go to those areas. It's also how they find their individual burrow in a colony of burrows. So everything looks really good. So I'm going to put the Toro back in its nest now. It's been very, very patient with us. And yeah, it's interesting because um, this one... This was one of those birds that it was hard to tell the sex because, you know, the bill was right on the cusp there, but the bill hasn't really grown much. It's quite relatively short and thin. So it really looks now, my last impression of it is that this is in fact a female bird. Whereas the other bird, um, uh, Atlas, uh, we also thought was a female, but um, looking back through my notes, I, I don't know. It was just a big bird in every respect. And so, I don't know, the jury's out in that one. But yeah, I'd say we have about three to four more nights of exercising for Totoro um, before it's ready to fledge out to sea. We do have a tropical disturbance uh, making its way up towards Bermuda from Florida. It soaked Florida um, this morning. And so winds are slightly to get quite windy um, by tomorrow night. So I should think that some of the more advanced chicks are going to take that opportunity to fledge but i don't think totoro is ready yet but it certainly will be out exercising probably in rain and wind and everything else because uh you know bad weather really doesn't mean much to them so by all means um we invite you to um go on to the nonsuch expeditions the kahao cam go on to kahao cam uh, 2 and the surface cam to see this bird as it comes out of its uh, nest entrance and uh, JP and I will be manning the cameras at night, doing our best to follow it around uh, and hopefully not falling asleep ourselves because they, they have a habit of waiting until like 4 a.m. or something just when we're both like passing out unconscious in front of the computer. Uh, and we'll see. Yeah, we should probably see some very interesting things over the next two or three nights. So, um, yeah, we'd just like to um, thank you for joining us uh, all through this long nesting season. It's been nearly seven months since the start of the season, last uh, late last October. And, uh, you know, it's always a privilege to be able to work with this critically endangered species that is, is making this very um, encouraging recovery now. Um, and I like to think it's, it's, you know, it provides hope for, you know, endangered species all around the world because, you know, we know the 
the impact that man is having on Earth's environment, uh, more and more species are, are falling into this thing. So what we learn working with this uh, endangered species um, is already proving to be very helpful in other um, endangered species management projects around the world. So thank you for joining us through this long season. Uh, we might have one or two more videos before it's all over, I suspect. And, uh, you know, we'll keep you updated on the, the latest um, events. And um, thanks for joining us. And everybody have a great afternoon on this beautiful, beautiful day. So all the best.